How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Crown Jewel yesterday. I love an afternoon pay-per-view. There's nothing better than watching wrestling at 1 o'clock in the afternoon rather than at night. Listen, I'm getting a little old. We'll talk about Crown Jewel and the fallout from there. It was a uh, it was a show. It was something. AW Collision last night. I have a lot of comments to make about this show. It's a very interesting time for AEW. 2025 is going to be very telling for the future of this company. And AEW and NXT go head to head this week. I don't know what that's going to do as far as numbers go. But very interesting, this Crown Jewel show, it, it really wasn't a, I would say it wasn't like a linear storytelling show. It was more of a, you know, just matches, nothing other than the bloodline, you know, affected continuity here. And that was the big story, was the bloodline feud continuing and the return of Sami Zayn into the bloodline. Did you like that? I thought that was pretty cool. I'm, I'm glad they brought him back. I'm just curious where they go from here. Because obviously it's war games, and it looks like it's going to be a four-on-four four and not a five-on-five, five, unless they decide to bring in two more family members. I like that Sammy is an honorary oose at this point. He's part of that story of the original bloodline, which I find hysterical. But we have a lot to talk about today. This and a whole lot more. There's a lot of news that came out, including Ring of Honor and the potential TV deal coming up. All this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Do me a favor. Hit me up on X at Andrew Zarian. I'm debating where I should do what I should do next. You know, my son Hunter's hanging out in the studio. What's going on, Hunter? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. He's hanging out with me. Yeah. So I'm gonna you, you're gonna decide. Should I talk about the news first, or should I talk about Crown Jewel, the pay per view from yesterday? I think you should do the pay per view. Pay per view. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. So that's where we're going now. We're going with the pay per view. My other producer now has uh is guiding the show. Yesterday. Crown Jewel, 1 o'clock pay-per-view here on the East Coast. Nothing better than that. I got a nice drink in my hand. I had a nice glass of wine. I turned this on. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm on my couch, and I'm watching this. I, I, It doesn't matter how great the show is or how bad the show is. I just really enjoy an afternoon wrestling show. This is how I want to consume all my pay-per-views. I don't want to sit there until 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock if you're lucky. The six man tag match was the first match on this card. I was surprised by the placement. Did you what did you think of that placement, MJ? Um, I was a little surprised too. Uh I was like, Andrew's gonna go, oh great, watch this match and then check out. <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't just that. I watched all of it. I watched all of it. Um But I but I, I get what yeah, it was surprising until I saw the end and I said, Oh, this wasn't a this didn't have a big booming story coming out of it so it, putting it first was fine yeah and hindsight. they want people to go home happy right and there was uh, yeah. a lot of unhappy moments in this match so pretty much the story was roman's return he looked great he was shredded like chiseled. Yeah. he looked incredible mm -hmm. roman comes out i don't necessarily care for that new intro he has the new there's song. too many stops there's too much there's too much stop and go just let it play out uh he well, comes here's out the thing yeah it was it was it was 20 after the top of the hour when the match is started. Yeah. When the actual bell rang. Yeah, it, it took, took 20 them, minutes. Yeah, it took a good eight minutes of uh, Michael Cole inter introducing the show and, and setting everything up. And then those entrances. Jeez. Yeah, very too long. long. So, Sokovo, Jacob Fatu, and Tama Tonga defeated Roman and the Usos. And Roman took the pin. And that, that was, was the big part. story here. That was yeah. big. That was very surprising. People did not imagine Roman was going to take the pin and lose. Uh, Roman took the pin. This also led to the return of Sami Zayn because it was where will he align himself with? That was a big story here for Sami. And Sami picked the original 
bloodline to 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 side with, obviously. And he more sided with Jay. I think he more he sided with, more Jay. with Jay. Yeah. But mm. there was a moment here where Solo's in the center of the ring. Everybody's on the corners. They're ready to attack him. Sammy goes for a kick. And Roman goes for a spear. And they just... Sammy kicked the crap out of Roman Reigns. <laughs> I mean, he, he laid him in. Uh, you know, this is leading into war games. And I think that's great. And this is where they had to go. Now, is it a four-on-four? Four, or, like you suggested... Do they I gave put, you my theory. You gave me your theory mm -hmm. where it's going to be Cody on one side also and and Kevin Owens on the other. Now, I don't want to see that. I, I don't want to see that. I like that this is a family matter. Sammy, Sammy's allowed. He's allowed in. He was given a pass. He was allowed into that crew. So I, I want him, I want them to stick to this. But you know what else is also awesome? Like I was watching these guys in that opening match, and I'm thinking, how great is it that they are? You know, these these guys. I'm sure they play fought like this as kids. You know, and your career is doing this with your cousins, and having a blast doing it. I think that's tremendous. That tickles me. But this was this match went 16 minutes. This is further continuing the storyline. We'll see where they go from here. Fatal four-way tag team match. Jade, Bianca, defeated Chelsea Green, Piper Niven, Kyrie Sane, Io Sky, Lash Legend, and Jakara Jackson to retain the titles. This was, this was a fun match. I enjoyed this. It was a nice display of the women in the match. Uh, Jade looks incredible. Bianca looks incredible. And you're starting to see that story being told. I think they got lost halfway through this match. There was I one point where I, there I was. don't think... I don't think there was one person that knew who was legal. <laughs> Not yeah, even they the did. Refs, get, no, they did. Announcers. I, <laughs> listen, match wise, it was whatever. But yeah. physically, I mean, everybody looked like a million bucks here. They all look great. I really, I really love Eo. Yeah, yeah she's, she's fantastic. So fantastic. Mm -hmm. Seth Rollins defeated Bronson Reed. I'm curious if they're going to continue this story. I think they will based on how they did the ending. Bronson got busted open at one point. Uh, do you know what was the spot that did that to him? Oh, uh, he hit the side of a the steel steps. I do. Believe. Was that it, or like I don't know if yeah. he got it there, mm -hmm. or he got it at a different point, and they just used that as the story. Yeah, they might have. I don't know, but they were all over, so it could have been in several places. But I think it was those steel steps. I'll tell you though, Seth mm -hmm. coming back much needed on that Raw roster with CM Punk out. Mm -hmm. Well. Do we just see him punk come back in a couple of weeks now if his crown jewel shows? I would over? imagine I would imagine he would come back in a couple of weeks. I would imagine he would show up at war games at least, because that's when he returned last year. That mm -hmm. was the big story. When I got a text message from somebody at that company ten minutes before, and they said, Are you watching the paper? I said, Yeah, my whole family's here. Everybody I had every, like everybody over my house. He goes, Keep watching. And he goes, are you Something still watching? Something interesting is happening. <laughs> and, and I think I messaged like the boys chat. You know, we got this boys chat here for like everybody that's involved with the podcast. And I was like, are you guys watching? Because I just got a very interesting. I had no idea until, until you know, that, that conversation. But I think he'll definitely show up. Take your pills, MG. Your alarm's going off. <laughs> uh, I, I like that Seth and Bronson were, are tied together. Bronson looked like a million bucks. And they did a good job of creating a monster here. And that's the key. When you got when you got somebody like this, you want to create a monster, and they're doing that. We'll see where they go from here. This match, I could say, I did not enjoy. Liv Morgan defeated the WWE Women's Champion Nia Jax to win the WWE Women's Crown Jewel Championship. This went eight minutes. What were your thoughts on this? This was what this was what it was. And far as that, I mean, it was. It was there to tell the story, and I think what they're doing is um, uh, taking um, – they're moving – it sounds like they're going to go with the Tiffany Stratton cashing in on Nia Jax based on yeah. the way they did this. Well, and that's what all this I was about. I, what, what confused me was Nia was annoyed that Tiffany came out to cash in, right? Yeah. But Even though I thought she would be there from the beginning. But wait, she yeah. told her to cash in on Liv. Right. But she didn't want to do it in the match? Is that what? No, I think she told that... her, like, hey, cash in on Liv. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I don't know. Part I, is, yeah, part of, part of the issue I have is if she would have entered the match, what title would have been on the line? Is it the Crown Jewel title? Is it one of the? It just it was very confusing. Oh, from you that, know what? That. What a great, what a great mm-hmm. mess up, right? She goes yeah. to cash mm-hmm. in and doesn't specify which one, and the ref thinks it's the Crown Jewel one. So now she won the the, the useless cr- Crown Jewel championship. <laughs> That's a great. You know what? That's a creative way to get yourself out of having having the briefcase out there. Um. I definitely, I think she's going to cash in on Nia, and uh, that'll be a big moment. And then you have a program between yeah. uh, babyface Tiffany and a heel Nia. Yeah, great. And, and I think I think Tiffany needs to be babyface. She's so over with everyone, yeah. so it makes sense. Mm. After this match, this Kevin Owens, Randy Orton stuff. Mm-hmm. I want you to give me your thoughts on this when we come back from our break, because what are they doing here now? All right. Well, I like I said, I think this is might be leading into them taking sides in the bloodline thing. Yeah, that's where this all started from. Yeah, I, I, mm. I think it's definitely going there. You know, it's a fine it's a fine avenue to go down. I, I just I, I don't know. I, I don't I, I want it to stay between them. When we come back from our break, we're going to talk about this. I want to talk about Kevin Owens, Randy Orton. I want to talk about where they go from there. We also have L.A. Knight retaining and the main event. Cody and Gunther to talk about, which I like that match. It was a nice standard match. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's pick it up with Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. This match never really officially started. Uh, They were brawling everywhere. There was a really fun ref uh, stunner spot. That ref spun in circles. (laughs) <laughs> when he took that stunner. Never seen anything like it. That was awesome. Uh, there was a big moment where Kevin Owens got on top of the balcony and jumped onto Randy Orton, laying him out on the table. I'm guessing, you know, th- th- he's going to go away for a little bit after that. Maybe a couple of weeks. Take Sounds him off like TV. It. Yeah, take him off TV for a couple of weeks. And then he'll come back and they could do something. But interesting way they did this match. Um, I, I, I And it was a little risky because that crowd really loves Randy Orton. And they didn't give them a Randy Orton match. They gave them whatever this was. They did consider. give them an entrance. They did give you them one the of entrance. the best yes. entrances yeah. I, I've ever heard. Because that crowd, this loves is how him. I know that um, Saudi Arabia is here to stay. Is they're into it all now. When they first started doing these Saudi Arabia shows, there wasn't a lot of... Um, they didn't seem to know the product. Now that everybody dude, knows the product. Dude, do you remember that first one? <laughs> yeah. The, Where they the were moving the furniture. <laughs> they were moving yes. furniture throughout the entire show. You had, you, and, and you had couches set up for like the, like the special families. Yes. Very different crowd now. Terrible. I mean, it, yeah. they, they've, listen, you know, they started this how many years ago? Five, now. you know, it's been five. It's, it's, it's mm-hmm. been five. Okay, so things have changed over the last five years. No, more than that, six. The anniversary of the the tarmac debacle was five years this week. That wasn't the first one, though. No, I don't. So maybe it is six. Maybe it's yeah. like six years. No, yeah. it was the second one, but they had done one in the same year. They were doing two yeah. a year. So that that one was the second one they did that year. Yeah, I, I, I listen, they, they, they figured out how to present this, and there's certain people that they really love, like Randy Orton. I thought this went over well for him. Triple threat match. LA Knight defeated Carmelo Hayes and Andrade to retain the title. This was short, too. They won nine minutes. A lot of people thought Carmelo was going to win it or Andrade was going to win it, but LA I retained. thought Carmelo was going to win it. I thought this match was really good. This was probably Yo, the good. best work match on the I, card. I yeah. don't think LA Knight gets as much credit as he should. I, I really don't. I this is a guy that got over all on his own uh two years ago. He has been consistent for them. He's unique in the sense that he's a throwback to an era that we grew up watching wrestling. Even those punches, mm-hmm. you know, he does those big wind up punches and his p- promos are are very n- late nineties, early two thousands, and not in a bad way. It, it's refreshing. Can I give he... you an opinion on LA Knight? Yeah, give me. That I find interesting. I he works. He this is like the old Hogan style. He works heel, but he's a babyface, and he's always going to be a babyface. 
Yeah. You get that out of that? Yeah, team? I get that. Yeah, he's, I totally got that. He, 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 he is, his attitude and everything he does is baby face. And it reminds me of that early rock stuff um, he did. But yeah, but I get that. But people just are going to treat him like a, ba- uh, like a complete baby face. Yeah. No matter I, how I, foolish he is. I, I like him. I, I think this was a good decision. I think it's good that he has that title. I think that's a positive. Mm-hmm. Undisputed Championship. Cody, my son's favorite. Hunter, you met Cody. Yeah. You met him at the garden. Yeah. And what did he say to you? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. You know what he said to Cody? He goes, my dad says you're winning the title. And he looked at me and he's like, I don't know. This is uh, the WrestleMania <laughs> prior. And what'd you call, what'd you call Dominic? Domino. By accident. And Rhea loved it. Rhea, Rhea goes, that's what I'm going to call him. Dirty Domino. <laughs> he goes up to him and goes, what up, Domino? <laughs> Undisputed champion Cody defeated the world heavyweight champion Gunther to, to win the men's crown jewel championship. Now, they don't get to keep this title because it has 50 no. carats of diamonds and all the rubies in the Middle East are on this thing. It looks like a chandelier. <laughs> you don't get to keep it, but you get to keep the ring. You get a ring for this. Uh, this was a a very... WWE main event, false finishes, big kickouts, and I thought they did that that Bret Hart and um, essentially the ending was the Bret Hart Piper match. Roddy Piper, yep. Right, what was that? WrestleMania eight. Yes. Right, was it eight? And that was yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, and that was the exact ending it reminded me of. So I, was, I know a, I've seen he that. He was in a choke, before. and he pushed back, and he got the pin. <laughs> mm-hmm. And everybody looked good. And we've seen that ending. We've seen that ending before and recently a lot. I remember they used to do that a lot with Shayna Baszler matches. Yes, that, that is that is every Shayna match. They do that spot. In, but again, that's a false finish in Shayna's match. This actually was the finish. Until they don't. Until I mean, I think Kari Sane won a couple matches with, against her. What did you that, so. What did you think of this match? I thought it started out. It was. It was. It was very plotting at first. It was what it should have been. But once they got going and once Cody uh, um, started taking those chops, I thought this match was awesome. It was really good. Mm. Yeah, I liked it. Gunther's great. He's a great world champion. But, you know, the the, the issue here is mm-hmm. Cody's championship is very much um, – that is the title. See, I don't see it that way, but um, because because they're on, as long as they stay on different brands, it's fine. Um, I for this year, he's the better he's the better champion. I think that's how they're going to have to look at this. I don't know how um, they're going to. I mean, it's only going to change when let's say CM Punk gets that title, right? That's when mm-hmm. I think it'll change. I, I right now the big story is Cody being the world champion, and Gunther is like that's the that's the hardworking title again, the world title. So, uh, do you feel it's a? I don't feel like it's an equal balance of champions. I guess if you look at the lineage from that pr- aspect, I get what you mean. No, no, no I'm talking about but, the presentation I mean, as far as it's presented to the fans. See, I don't see that. Then I, I think they're pretty equal as long as they're on the top of their specific shows and they're the focal point of those shows. It's I'm fine with it. Did you feel it's the same way when, when it was joint Damien? Shows. When Damien had the title? Um, yeah, because he okay. was at the top of the show. He was kind of presented as the main character of the show, even though there was other guys around him. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. But I think Gunther has been presented so strong this last, past two years that, yeah, I'm, I, I don't have a problem with it at all. So a few notes from this. Uh, they brought over a very large production team this time around for the show. Because they just got done as as we uh, as we're going as we're going live, they just got done ra- recording raw. Yeah, so, so raw from over there. Yeah, so they did two. They they they're filming raw air obviously tomorrow, but uh, they no they, today. I'm t- they I'm t- air, no, no, no. Did. But it'll air tomorrow. Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I'm. I, you. The daylight savings Sorry. confused you. <laughs> You're yes, now missing yes. days, All not, not hours. <laughs> but they brought over a very large production team because they had to do two shows. Uh, they also did a two-hour pre-show, much like the NFL and uh, college game day. Looks like this is going to be a thing now for these two-hour shows. 
they're putting they're, a lot of it is that WWE experience in Riyadh, and that's where the titles are going to stay. Because obviously they do not want to hand these titles to a wrestler to travel with. No. And put it in the suitcase and God forbid it gets stolen. Uh, and then uh, Liv and Cody were given rings here. Those rings were nice. I think they sized them the same. And they gave Liv, Liv the ring and she was like swimming on her hand. And, and Cody's Cody could barely get his on. Yeah, Cody's was strugg <laughs> Cody was struggling to put that thing on. <laughs> Uh, overall, it was okay. It was fine. It was a it was a show. There was yeah, nothing it, it nothing crazy. major, nothing crazy. There was no Bill Goldberg. Even though Goldberg was on um, ESPN, what was he on? Uh, it, it was on um, the SEC network. It's on the SE, SEC yeah. network's uh, uh, pre show for the college the college games. Yeah, he. Um, so. It looks like 2025, Bill Goldberg will be retiring. He's going to have his retirement match. Now, I don't know if he's only having one match or a series of matches here. But this is something Bill wanted to do that uh, Vince had promised him. And it wasn't delivered. And now he wants to retire this way. And I'm curious what they do with this. Will it be Gunther? Will that be his retirement? He speculated that that's what... It sounds like that's what, who he would like to do it against. And we'll see. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is he the guy? Is he the best guy for him to, to do that match with? I, th I I mean, I'm okay with as that. As long as he goes out on his back, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. If he somehow beats uh, whoever he's facing, then I might have an issue with it. I always say, it, I will hold my opinion till it's done. Whether he wins or Fair. loses... I like to I like to hold my opinion till it's over because we it don't know tells, how, they, how yeah. yeah it also it also depends on the story they tell while they're doing the match too definitely that definitely I think the the Gunther stuff would be good for them to do I think that's pretty cool also Rhea Ripley suffered an orbital bone fracture last week they took her out on NXT. They presented it. She was in a parking lot. I don't know how far she's at. I think she should come out with like some gnarly mask and start Maybe wrestling with the with the face guard. Remember the Undertaker Phantom of the Opera mask when he broke his orbital? That I think that's what she should have. Her character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make it make it like a, you the know what? Do like a grotesque <laughs> mask, like a Phantom of the Opera, just one side. Mm -hmm. Then she could go mm -hmm. into the gorgeous uh, the the Cody Rhodes thing where he was too handsome and he uh, thought he was heinous. Yes. Mm -hmm. You could do that. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. When we come back, a few more notes here in AEW news. We're going to talk about Collision and their pay-per-view coming up and a whole lot more. Also, ECW Arena will have another show, NXT 2300. We have the lineup for that. A lot of ECW guys. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Oh, yeah. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. A few more notes here. I totally missed this. Um, Baron Corbin, Indy Hartwell, and Tegan Knox depart WWE. They were released. Corbin's case, they chose not to renew his contract. So I think he's free to go. And Indy and Tegan both have 90-day non-competes. This came on a Friday. Uh, I'm surprised about Baron Corbin. I'm very surprised about Baron Corbin. Did you expect him to get released? I thought that guy's like a lifer. I well, it just it just feels like they just never have anything for him, and it, it never whatever they do with him, it just kind of stalls. They and had they've going, had a couple, they've had a handful of opportunities. One was when he broke when he was broken, he lost all of his money. Yeah, I thought that, that was, was probably the best the best best character he had uh, on TV. But also, his original character was fantastic well, in NXT. Yeah, the yeah the way they presented him was great, and then. I think he come to the main roster and Vince tried to do the Vince thing with him and it didn't work. And it did not and work. They ended up, and at one point they ended up uh, blaming all the uh, ratings woes on him. On <laughs> him. Yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I um, surprise. I mean, where does he go? What does he do? Does he show up in AEW? Remember, this what? guy had like a six-month, uh, uh, year-long program with Roman Reigns at one point. Yeah. Mm, so He fed him mm. dog food, didn't he? Yeah. 
yeah, that, that was that was a high, uh, that was a very low point to that whole thing of, yeah. of, of that era in, in WWE. Yeah. Uh, so, and then Marco Stunt has also announced that he is uh, retiring. So that and that's that on Friday he announced. I found that interesting. Of- I, yeah, I found that was interesting because he was part of that original e, um, AEW lineup and he was a big part he was he was one of those secondary characters that they pulled from the indies along with orange cassidy and uh even jungle boy yeah that 2019 aew that 2020 aew Mm -hmm. was very interesting uh very different company today talking about aew let's go into collision um i normally i like collision i did not love this show this show did not do it for me I'm just saying that. And I'm generally very high on Collision. I like that it's my Friday, it's my Saturday night wrestling show where I, it's a lot of wrestling. You know, they were they injected a lot of storyline here, but and that's why you didn't like it, I think. I don't know. I don't know. And I think storyline is needed. I just maybe it was me. Maybe I just was watching in a very different mood. Um I just didn't love it. Private Party came out to celebrate. That's how it started. We saw them win the titles. The Young Bucks ran away. They're off TV. This was on with all their shredded documents. <laughs> they were shredding documents like it's Watergate. Still my favorite part. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're burning documents like the fall of Saigon. You know, they're they're just destroying <laughs> everything uh, on, on dynamite. But they came out. They thanked the Bucks for pushing them, which was interesting. And then they got in the face of FTR. And this was interesting. I guess that's the next program for them. FTR and, and well, private party. There's a tag. There's they're doing a um a four way at the pay per view, and there's going to be a series of matches that to, to, to yeah to determine speak, determine who it is yeah. determine who it'll be. Yeah. Do we have the card here? Put on they put on that pay per view uh, card on the notes too, so I could kind of touch on that. Uh, that okay. started it. You got a Day of the Dead match. Thunder Rosa defeated Harley Cameron. Essentially, it was a hardcore match. Thunder looked good. I thought Harley Cameron looked good too. Har- Harley looked good too. Yeah, Surprising. they give they give yeah. this some some time. It was nice. Kyle Fletcher defeated Commander. So this was the first match with his shaped head. <laughs> this is becoming an interesting story, right? With Aussie Open, what happens here with Mark Davis? That seems to be the story. That may, that seems to be the program. I, why was Mark Davis out for so long? What was the injury? Uh, was it a knee? I can't remember. It might have been a knee. My son is uh, sure. making notes here. This is what he drew while we're doing the show here. I think this guy should be a wrestler. He kind of looks like Kyle Fletcher here. Before, before his haircut? Yeah, before his haircut. So... I, I, I like that they're doing something with Kyle Fletcher. I that he's fantastic. He's young. He has a look. He's great in the ring. I'm glad that they recognize it. Mark Davis is a good first opponent for this new version of him to kind of end that story. But I don't know what happens with Mark Davis moving forward. Where do you put him? I also felt that everybody looked the same on the show. You know what I mean? Like there's that... a lot everybody's in street clothes. Everybody looked the same to me. That was part of my problem. You know who doesn't look the same? These two. Lance Archer and Brian Cage. They defeated Sean Smith and Joe Case. This was more of a display match for these two. Yeah, they just they were murdered just them. With food. <laughs> yeah, they were playing with their food. That's exactly how I would describe it. Uh, they they were, you know, they're a dominant tag team. Brian Cage is the Ring of Honor TV champion. There's a lot of speculation as to what's going on with Ring of Honor. Chris Jericho's a world champion. Brian Cage is there. T- I mean, the, you know, if you are getting a TV deal, right? And everything is about first impressions and pre- presentation. You know, Brian Cage is an impressive looking dude. He's a guy you want a title on. Chris Jericho, one of the most recognizable names in, in professional wrestling. He's another one that you want to put a title on. Maybe they're, they're just going to go with the same old, uh, what they did with AEW with their initial TV. Put the titles on some pretty big names. And see where it goes from there. That that now that now that we heard about the TV 
speculation of TV for ROH. That makes sense. They're going to put it on Jericho. Now, a lot of people ask me about this. Uh, I mm-hmm. don't know anything about it. I, I've And this, you know, I haven't been active. I had a, a death in the family, so I haven't been, you know, doing this for the last two mm-hmm. weeks. But I was very surprised to hear about it because I reached out to somebody with WBD and they didn't know about Ring of Honor. So I don't know if this is a WBD thing. A lot of people are assuming this goes on True TV, which I think that's a great channel for them to be on. And I think that's a good builder for that station because they're going sports-centric in primetime. But I don't know. And if this is the case, I think this is good. I think this is a good move to get them on TV. But if not, then I'm curious where it goes. Lance Archer and Brian Cage defeated them. John Moxley came out to his death rider with his death riders. They came out to warn Orange Cassidy. But the games have already begun. He started putting over Yuta because he was from Philly, like Cassidy. And then didn't he start punch like hitting him? Yeah, he when when uh, Orange Cassidy came out, he sent Yuta after him. And Yuta, because they've been friends before, didn't want to attack him. So he started slapping him <laughs> until he went out there. <laughs> this is an then abusive action, relationship. Then Action and Dreddy <laughs> would come out, and then he got jumped by Pac. So... That, that is leading into that led into mm-hmm. Pac defeating Action and Dreddy. Which I really liked that match. I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good match. Pac is great. I mean, he's fantastic. He really is. He, he's, you know, there's so many of these guys that when this company started, you could have said, well, he could be a world champion. They could, they could really build with him. They could build with this one. They could build with that one. And I don't know. Pac has been stop and go. Malachi has been stop and go. There's a lot of these guys. Buddy Matthews mm-hmm. is super impressive to, to look at. And really, he's, he's just doing matches. That's it. Nothing else. You also got Takeshita and Kyle Fletcher backstage with, with Lexi. They said they want to enter the tag team picture and challenge Ricochet to find a partner next week. I think we know who that partner is going to be. Mark Davis. No? Uh, I was thinking more of a... Uh... Uh, returning Will Ospreay, but okay. okay maybe, maybe, too. maybe Will Ospreay. Mm. Okay. Like you could do that too. Leo Rush defeated Arya Davari. You also had Roderick Strong with no mustache defeating Shane Taylor. <laughs> MJF was shown, I guess at home watching very unimpressed, but I don't even know what he was watching. It looked like he wasn't even watching that. I think he was just watching something else. Okay. You got a Mina video package. Mina is coming. Great. I put that in there for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Mina. Uh, we also got, uh, it was announced that Private Party would be defending the tag titles in a four-way match at full gear. And Mariah May defeated Anna J in the main event to retain. It was something. There. Yeah, it was there. It was there. I mean, there was a couple of good things. I I think the only really storyline uh, advancement was the Moxley stuff. To be honest with you, well, that that seems mm. to be the big one. Yeah, mm. that and that's the big, the big one. one. That's carrying the company right now. To be honest, yeah, that's the one story I I want to watch Dynamite and Collision for. Yeah, because you want to know what happens what next. But next. I hope, yeah, I hope, I hope they keep the suspense up. You know, mm-hmm. and because they and get keep adding layers to it. Yeah, we need layers. Here's a card for. The show in New Jersey for the pay-per-view. AW World Champion John Moxley defends against Orange Cassidy. Jay White versus Hangman Page. MJF versus either Adam Page or Roderick Strong. And you got a four-way for the title, for the tag titles. And on zero hour, the Costco guy, AJ, boom or doom against QT Marshall. That's a match I'm looking forward to. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. They bring the boom. Did you know that? I did. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. My son is singing this while we're doing this. Here's a lineup for Wednesday. I'm looking forward to this. Adam Cole and Malachi Black. That's going to be a good match. They wrestled in NXT. They did. They did for the title. I believe it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And those were fantastic, fantastic matches. I, Adam, you know, obviously he was hurt, but Adam needs a couple home runs here. I think it's needed for him. And he's gone through a lot. He's had a lot of injuries and, and no fault of his own, but 
He needs a home run, and, and he could have that with Malachi here because Malachi is fantastic. You got to fight without honor. You got Chris Jericho, Big Bill, and Brian Keith versus Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly, and Tomohiro Ishii. Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy versus Claudio and Pac. The patriarchy is, conf is, con is confronting, not confirming, confronting Hook. Penelope Ford, Jamie Hayter. Takesha and Kyle Fletcher versus Ricochet and To Be, to be Determined. Turnbuckle Al or Turnbuckle Dan, one of those guys. And the Hurt Syndicate will appear. This coming off last week's show where Bobby Lashley debuted. He is gigantic. Looking, looking huge, yes. He's huge. He was wearing a, a suit that resembled meat. This man is made out of rocks. I've never seen anybody with that physique. Also, you know who's so impressive? Uh, Shelton Benjamin is so good. I don't care what anybody says. 47 years old. Looks like a billion bucks. I hope to see them do a lot more with him. But listen, a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of exciting stuff. When does Shane show up? That's what I'm asking. That's the biggest question, guys. <laughs> God. <laughs> when is Shane McMahon debuting? You know what? What if they come in? What if the Bucks show up with Shane? Oh, they come back with their benefactor? With their <laughs> no, benefactor. No. They were shredding all the documents, and now they show up with Shane McMahon? The consortium with Shane? <laughs> no. Please, no. <laughs> I just want to see everything explode. When we come back, yeah, we're going to talk about you, some more stuff, burn. and and we're going to talk about the show in the ECW arena for NXT. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Ooh. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. As a reminder, you can follow me on X. I do this show along with a billion other things. You can get all the info on there. WWE returns to the ECW arena. NXT goes to the ECW arena. NXT 2300 from e the ECW arena. This is going to be a very ECW heavy show. Uh, last week, I don't know which show I was on with you. You and I were talking about this. And we were mentioning all the people that could show up. And I think they did exactly what I said. Nunzio is going to be there. Rob Van Dam is going to be there. Bubba is going to be there. Dawn Marie is going to be there. And I'm sure some other people too. I can't imagine that's it. Well, it just but, depends on who's available, but yeah. <laughs> but the the main match here is Trick Williams and Bubba Ray Dudley against Ethan Page and Ridge Holland. <laughs> That's quite a pairing. They're going to do all the spots, right? We're going to get to get the tables. Divide, They're going to do and, all uh, of it. What's yeah. up? And yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to get Tony D'Angelo in a meeting with Nunzio. Obviously, they'll do an FBI <laughs> bit there. I wonder which FBI people show up. Hmm. With J.T. Smith? Wasn't that one? I believe so. Yeah, J.T. Smith. The wrestler. I think. Yeah, J.T. Smith. That, there, <laughs> there he is. Yeah, he was in the FBI. <laughs> That's hysterical, by the way. That's great. Uh, we'll see. It'll be a fun show. Listen, it's a gimmick show in a gimmick building. And I say that in, in a good way, not as an insult. And I think that's fun. It'll be great. Have you ever been there? It's good for the nostalgia. I've been there. I have I've never, been in that I building. I have never been in there. No. Yeah. It was like a billion degrees when they ran the show there. And it was a, a exactly what you would imagine it to be in that building. My favorite ECW building, not the Hammerstein Ballroom, which I want to talk about that. Next week, I'm going to talk about the Hammerstein Ballroom a little bit. But it's not the Hammerstein. It's the Queen's Elks Lodge. Guys, this was a blast. We'll see you all next week. Till then. Bye-bye for now.